I am a survivor. I am a lucky survivor. Most of us sitting out there, they are beautiful survivors. All of you working and interested in global health are going to end up working hand by hand and side by side with these species of survivors. I chose deliberately the, the title of this talk to make me think about climate change. And the reason is because we, our generation, and our kids, our children's generation, will have to go through this. The world is no shortage of maps to talk about predictions, models, impacts, etc. <coughs> We're even modeling the health impacts of that. We're even making assumptions, testing, considering what will happen to our species. Yet my criticism relies on the fact that the human factor is not well addressed. And here I am to publicly disclose that I do not know something. <laughs> Many things in reality. <laughs> and here I am in this room because I want that ignorance to turn into curiosity for all of you to work together, all this talent together, to bring me answers for me and for my kids. Because we need to learn how we're going to move forward in the next two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, and I hope that I'm alive to see how our human species has reacted to vulnerability, adaptation, and resilience. When I say that I'm a survivor and a lucky survivor, it's because one of the greatest achievements in public health, in international health, and in global health. One of the greatest achievements that you are all proud of is called child survival. But that wasn't a tax-free equation. That wasn't without a debt. And my generation is carrying that debt. I am the generation of Peru, 1976. One in two had chronic undernutrition. Currently today, currently under, chronic undernutrition or stunting, today is up to 40% in certain countries, those countries where you have your eyes in global health. The productive workforce are walking through our societies with that debt, and that debt takes the shape, shape of this. Most of you will be familiar with this image. It's a beautiful image of a brain, of a kid, of a kid with opportunities, without challenges in the first thousand days. And this is the contrast. Most of us are carrying this type of brain now. Hope not me. Neurons are grosser, connections are weaker, there are less amounts of neurons, and that is going to give us a dead price. We're paying that price. We've heard the term of stunted keys, stunted, stunted brains. We can expand in the same vein to stunted organs. We can expand that following, the thing, to say how are those organs reacting and connecting and talking to each other? How are capacities? How are biological responses? How are physiological interactions in the context of paying that human debt? of having survived of that difficult child circumstances. Because I want you to think what will be the impact of these stunted biological and physiological responses when the time comes for us to deliver us as a species. Will we adapt? Will we be resilient? Will we be vulnerable? I don't know. And that's the part I don't know, and I want you to challenge to see, can we think ahead what will happen to us? I started with this image. And I don't need a statistic to show that there's something going on. I've used the two images. Climate change, our current population. Climate change will hit the hardest in these areas, and this is our capacity, our human capacity, to do address that. Put them two together. This is the picture for your tweet. 
what do we know about our human capacities, reactions, physiological responses, and interactions to adapt, to become resilient, or to address vulnerability. And I want you all to help me think about this, because when I go back home tomorrow, when I talk to Andrea, my daughter, and say, Andrea, this is the world that is out there for you. This is the type of army that you have to fight and address these problems. Thank you.